Welcome back to the Cheap Heat Productions podcast. Okay, welcome back to the show, and today I'm joined by a wrestler, Mr. James Ellsworth. How are you today, man? I'm good, man. You had Carol Baskins on the show before? <laughs> yeah, crazy. Awesome. Yeah, I had her on actually twice, and then I've had a few other guys from Tiger King as well that don't like her as well, so I like to hear both sides of the story. Well, yeah, I don't know her, so I don't know if I like her or not. That's the way I feel about people. If I've never met them, never been around them, I can't just judge by whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah. Did, did you watch Tiger King? absolutely man i try yeah. to watch tiger king too it's not as entertaining so i, no. I could get through it I, I pretty much said that to her i said that uh look you're not involved she's not involved for legal reasons joe was in jail and i yeah. said i know you two guys hate each other but the show is nothing without you both that's right that's what made the yeah. show man like i yeah. it, so. i like your t-shirt Oh, yes. You know, Jericho's my buddy, man. I went and saw Fozzie. They came to Baltimore, Maryland, USA, where I live. Um, is it October? And yeah. I went and saw them, got the shirt. <laughs> so it was I, cool. I, I seen them in Ireland. They played in Ireland in December. They played in Dublin and Belfast. So we went to both nights. Really, really good. Nice. Yeah, both great cities. I, I love doing WWE shows over in Dublin. And yeah it's uh those are fun man like over in the uk you guys like it seems like you just love like entertainment when every yeah. time i go over there the, the people are just so into the stuff and it's really cool man like i can't wait to get yeah. back over there one day yeah we've had a hard time over here with lockdowns and shit like that especially in ireland but finally a couple of weeks ago everything opened so Good. it looks like we're getting back to normal if that's a thing now so hopefully we are <laughs> The new normal, as they call it. <laughs> the new normal. I just don't. I just want the old normal back as soon as we can. Hopefully, dude. I hopefully one day, man. Like usually, pandemics. I've read up a lot on them. They last three or four years, and they kind of run their course. So hopefully, yeah. we're almost there. But yeah. we'll see. Yeah. Did Did you find like as long as this pandemic has lasted, it just seems like when you look back on it, that time is after kind of going fast. I think time's going slow. I think it's really. Slow sucks man like yeah um like it's february and I, it's february the third and yeah. i feel like it's february the 45th i feel like we've been <laughs> in february for like like five weeks already and february is only like three and a half weeks long <laughs> it sucks did um did the the lockdowns and stuff in the states have a lot of impact on your independent wrestling well Yes and no. Yes, because uh, where I live, everything was shut down. Everything like nobody was running. But like I, you know, there's 50 states over here in the U.S. Yeah. And I looked up the states that were staying open, like Tennessee, Florida, Texas, Georgia. It wasn't a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And I contacted every promoter I could. It was like, hey, I would come wrestle. I would give you a deal. I went out to Tennessee and I stayed out there for like a week and wrestled like four different independents one week. I, I stayed busy, man. I hustled. I was selling merchandise out of my house. That that got very popular. Um, and then, yeah, I, I don't know. It didn't really affect me that much because I, I really just – me, I'm a hustler, man. Like, I figure out ways to get through things. Yeah. And that's what I did. I got through it. And, um, you know, I, I, I didn't say, you know what, I'm just going to sit here and wait. I said, no, I'm going to do something. I'm not going to sit here and wait. I'm going to figure out a way to get this done. And that's exactly what I did. It was cool. Yeah. If we rewind back, how did you decide that you wanted to get into this game as a pro wrestler? <clears throat> Dude, so ever since I can remember, I, I wanted to be a wrestler. Like, I was like four or five years old and watching on TV, and I was like, that's what I want to do when I get older. I, like, And it just never left my mind. Like, I just mm -hmm. always wanted to do it. As soon as I saw it for the first time, that it's, it's all I've ever wanted to do. 
Yeah. And in terms of WWE, then you went there and you kind of done a few trials beforehand. For example, I was reading that you were one of Adam Rose's Rosebuds back in the day as well. Is that true? Yeah, they weren't necessarily tryouts. When you go there mm-hmm. as um, an extra talent, they can put you as a Rosebud. They can put you as a guy that's getting beat up real quick. They can put you as a, you know, a security guard or a doctor. Or just You're just an extra on a television show. It's all mm-hmm. you are. They're not people call them tryouts which i find hilarious a tryouts when they invite you to like the performance center to actually try out to be a part of the roster when you're an Mm -hmm. extra talent it's not a tryout (laughs) you're just there to be background character or you know what have you I've seen some uh, pretty big people though kind of war rose buns like uh our own becky lynch was one as well and she's gone on to to nxt yeah yeah and in terms of your first match, then it was against Braun Strowman, and that was kind of that was more of the tryout, really, wasn't it? Well, no, it was again. That wasn't a trial. It's just they, they decided to um, get take Braun away from the Wyatt family at the time and, and make him a singles competitor. And they were going to have him beat up these uh, extra talents every week, these local talents. And the whole angle was we got to say our last words before he killed us, basically. Yeah, and I, I was the first one to do it. And, you know, I just happened to be there that day, and they they um they picked me because Arn Anderson thought I was the best one out of the, out of the group that was there, which I'll always appreciate him picking me. And so I, you know, I said my promo and I did my match, and it's like Vince McMahon just he saw something in me that day. He was the one. Vince McMahon after the match was like, "You did a great job." He said, "I need to hire you," and I thought he was mm-hmm. kidding. I was like. Thanks. He goes, I'll be in touch. I was like, huh? <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah. six weeks later, he got in touch with me and they brought me back and he gave, gave me the contract, man. It was just mind boggling. That's like everybody's yeah. dream, especially if you're an independent wrestler. At that point, I'd been wrestling 14 years mm-hmm. and that's like your thing, man. I wish I could be on Raw tomorrow. And then all of a sudden I was on Raw tomorrow and I, you know, and then they sent me over to SmackDown six weeks later and I, I was there for the better part of two years on SmackDown. It, it was just nuts, man. I, I, I yeah. still can't get it. I wake up every day thinking about it. Like, I can't believe I did all that. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. When you when you talk about Vince McMahon, like he's always a, an intriguing character. Anyone I talk to from the business, I always like to um, talk about Vince. So, for example, when you and him met, what way did he describe your character to you? Well, I kind of, it's weird, like, so we didn't really have many conversations about my character because yeah. I feel like the character I was played was the one that I'd been playing my whole career. I'm an underdog. I'm goofy. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in over my head, like, especially at first when I was doing stuff with AJ Styles and uh, Dean Ambrose, who was now mm-hmm. John Moxley. Let me say that before people go, he's John Moxley. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and, um, so, and he just he always appreciated my character work and always complimented me on it and i would ask him what do i need to do better he's like you're doing a great you're doing exactly what i want you to do you're doing exactly what i need you to do you're doing a fantastic job he would always tell me that um as especially at first when i was doing the stuff with uh mm-hmm. aj styles and dean john Michaels, lee ambrose and um <laughs> Yeah. Once I got with Carmella, he he did he got hands on once I was with Carmella, and would say like oh like at first like you're just so in love with her you'll do anything for her which like that's easy like who who can't play this character who can't pretend yeah. like they're in love with Carmella, and um <laughs> you know and then like he goes and then like midway through he's like all right you guys are like best friends you're chums he said the word chums he's like you're chums, chums. he's like you know you'll still do anything for her. you still have a little thing for her, but you're like your buddies and you're you know, I'm like, okay. So he, I, he really, really likes Carmella. I, I always tell people that I, I think Carmella will have a job for a very long time. Cause I can tell Vince and rightfully so just like, um, is very high on her. Yeah. When you were working that program with styles and John Dean Ambrose Moxley, um, <laughs> was there ever a discussion about you potentially getting the belt off him? You know, I never, um pay attention to those things like people would come up to me like hey man in the meetings they're talking about you winning the title and i'm like yeah okay <laughs> and then, like, yeah. um so people did say it to me and Vince McMahon himself never said it to me um yeah 
But I didn't pay much attention to it because, like, I'm a realist. I'm like, they're not going to put the title. I mean, they shouldn't. Like, I'm five foot eight, 165 pounds. I'm not really, um, you know, GQ magazine. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I always thought in the back of my mind, well, it is wrestling and anything can happen. You know, you know that'd be cool. And if it did happen, it'd be, and it would have been for, like, a couple of minutes or a week. And I and I know, dude, obviously it would have been awesome and I would have appreciate it i could have signed wwe title belts the rest of my life which i still kind of do anyway yeah but um i try not to think about it because if that would have happened man I, it would have been i mean my life changed forever because i was there anyway but if that were to happen it would have changed forever ever like it, it that would have just you know solidified like uh, anything anybody could want in the business but yeah i mean the writers here and there said something to me but i never took it you know, unless it's out of Vince McMahon's mouth, it does yeah. not matter. It does. That's yeah. that's his show. That's his company. He's the boss. The end. <laughs> you yeah. know, so. And like I heard, like even for his age, like he's so hands on. Was he like there like all the time? I saw him all the time, almost every week. Every now and then he wouldn't be there a week because he was in the office still doing something. Yeah. But, but um, more often than not, he he was at. He was at um, all the television shows on all the pay per views and everything. And who was your favorite people to work with in the ring as a wrestler at the time? There? Oh well, AJ Styles is the best wrestler in the world. Still to this day, yeah. nobody could touch him. Him and Rey Mysterio's match from this past Monday's Raw. I tell anybody go watch that match. It, it, AJ's awesome. So AJ Styles first and foremost. I was very appreciative that I got to work with John Cena because yes, uh, he's the best. Um, as we call it in the business, worker in the business. Um, see, there's wrestler and there's worker. AJ Styles is the best wrestler. Everything he does looks great. Mm -hmm. John Cena is the best worker, meaning he can get that crowd. Even if he comes out and they're booing him out of the building, he can flip it on them and get any. And I've seen him do it a million times on house shows and everything. He can get that crowd to flip and cheer him by just working in the ring. And that, it's very hard to do. And he he! I sat there and watched him do it almost on a nightly basis. We were in Chicago one night. I think it was for a house show, and he wrestled AJ Styles. And they were just so loud for AJ chant AJ Styles at the top of their lungs and booing John Cena. Then by the end of the match, they were cheering John Cena, booing AJ. I'm like, see, this guy's a genius. He, whatever he did to make them do that, like, and it, it, it's just great to watch. So him mm. and then Becky Lynch, like, I I am not surprised or shocked at all of the success she's had that she's one of the most intelligent wrestlers in the business talents in the business just very smart and um i got to wrestle her in uh in london over there on smackdown and we had a good and she man we had a good little match if anybody goes back and watches it, it wasn't just all goofiness like my character yeah. called for my character called for the goofiness but we actually had some wrestling in there and and like I, I am not at all shocked or surprised that she's become this big draw in the business, selling all the merchandise, main event, WrestleMania. So those were as far as people I got to wrestle there: Becky Lynch, AJ Styles, and John Cena. And and look who I'm naming, like yeah, just the it's, top, of, the cream of the crop, you know. And yes. um, yeah, those definitely to me were my favorite three yeah. talents. I, you know, I, like I got to work with Kurt Hawkins. I was in the ring with Bray Wyatt a little bit. Um, we did a six man on SmackDown. I don't know others, but man, those are the three that stick out in my head. Yeah, is it crazy kind of to look back on it? Oh yeah, of course. I yeah. mean, like, I, I, so my daughters are getting older. Um, they're going to turn ten and seven this year. So when I was doing all that, like my uh, ten year old, she remembers. A lot of it like she remembers the stroman match and i think she was like four at the time and mm -hmm. she remembers like always remembers the, the stroman match and she remembers all the stuff with carmella and um and my youngest she's starting to watch it on youtube now like like you know she's like she'll be seven she's like daddy you, you wrestled john cena i'm like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, and um it's cool man like it's cool that i i got to do all that up I was very appreciative that I did get to do all that. I still am to this day. Like a lot of talents, man. I don't get it. But I hate Twitter. I hate I'm for obvious yeah. a lot of reasons. But like, but a lot of ex talents will go in there and bash WWE. I'm like, yeah. oh, I hated there. I'm glad I got. Or people will ask for the release. I'm like, wait a minute, wait, a minute. like back up. Like these people paid you hundreds of thousands of dollars. They made action figures of you. You're in video games. You like Pete like are you not thinking about this <laughs> like what mm, they did yeah. for you you know like 
My I think opinion. I think a lot of it, James, seems to come down to lack of creative freedom seems to be a big thing in the business in terms of WWE. Did you find that you had any give or take with your character or was everything pretty much handed on a script to you? Well, like I would get a script, but a lot of times I would just, you know, say, hey, instead of saying this, can I say this? Or say, And I, I probably went to the well one too many times because I was yeah. – they, they had me cut a promo almost every week when I was doing the stuff with AJ and, and Moxley and I was doing the stuff with Carmella. Like I was talking all the time because they really were high. Like Vince was high on my promos. So they had me talk. But I probably was a little like big for my bridge. Not like yeah, I was never like cocky or arrogant, but I, I was so passionate about the stuff. I was very hands on. I would call writers. I would do because I cared so much about my character. You know, I, I didn't care if I was winning or losing, losing the girls or like I, I did. If you think about it, I lost the girls there, lost to Oscar, lost to Becky Lynch, but then I beat AJ Styles. Like, so my character could do anything. Like, yeah. I could lose a million times and then probably win the Intercontinental title. Like, that's how that character was. He was just an enigma, you know? So, um, yeah, but. I probably got on the writer's nerves, or you know, a little because I was, I really, really cared about every little detail that I was doing. And if I gave any guys any advice, if they get there and make it there, yeah, always give pointers here and there, but don't go to the well too many times. And remember, mm -hmm. you're working for this man. This man is paying you a lot of money. You're traveling the world on his dime, because when you're in the moment, you forget about all that. Just. Just kind of do your job, do it to the best of your ability, even if you know the script is bad, which later on in the Carmella stuff, the, uh, before I came back, one, one, you know, I had that seven month break where I wasn't there and then I came mm -hmm. back. But like towards the end of the first time with Carmella, they had me like on a dog leash and I was barking, all this really bad <laughs> stuff. It was bad, yeah. like bad. And that's I what knew. I was That's what I was going to say about that. Was there ever any time that they asked you to do something and you, you just said no or you didn't want to do it or you thought it was too stupid or whatever i never said no to doing anything because mm -hmm. i always knew that it's my job and i'm getting paid very well to do it the dog stuff i just like i wasn't like embarrassed or anything like i mean again most men definitely would love to be out there barking for carmella like you know <laughs> so I, didn't care. I, I just thought if i'm a fan i always look at it from a fan's perspective yeah, I thought if I'm a fan watching this and seeing this, I'm not entertained by this. Like, and up until that point, I thought everything they did with me was very good. Everything with AJ Styles, Dean Ambrose, and everything with Carmella, like from grabbing the briefcase and giving it to her, that was genius. Like, yeah, I, I thought, and then when we got to that, I was like, this ain't, and I, it, when you're not feeling it and you're like, you're an artist, like, you know, you're, you're playing this character and you're not feeling it. Like you're, I had to say something. I would, <clears throat> I would never say, Hey, I'm not doing this. Mm -hmm. I, if they wanted me to bark. I was trying to bark as best I could. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they want me to walk out on a leash. I made it funny. Like she would like drag me on the leash. I'd make funny faces and all. we didn't really get to do it much on TV. Cause again, I think they knew it was stupid. <laughs> you know? yeah. But, um, yeah. Like when house shows, we got to do it a lot. And I was, trying my best to make it entertaining like i was like if this is what they're giving me i'm gonna try my best to and i was like maybe it'll have a good payoff where the ellsworth character will just have enough of this and he'll turn on carmella and cost her the briefcase or cost her, her women's title yeah. or whatever but vince he, he he said to me um when i was there the last time i was there was 2018 he said to me you know and they did a thing where Paige fired me on smackdown and i was on my way and he goes, man, like it could be three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. We could always bring you back and put you back with Carmella at any point because the Ellsworth character is always going to care about Carmella. He's always going to have her back. He said, we're never going to stop that. He's, that was like one of the last things he said to me. I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, and Carmella is still there. So every time I see her, I'm like, well, I guess I'll always have a chance to do something because she's still there. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. And what's what's your off screen relationship like with Carmetta? Because you seem to have a really good on screen chemistry to you guys. Oh yeah, I mean like she's very cool, man. Like if I text her and I go, "Hey, it's my daughter's birthday. Can you send a video?" She'll send it right right, right to me. If I text her, just ask her how she's doing and what's going on. She'll get back to me. So we uh, yeah we're we've always been friendly. We were like would we work together every day? And we a total of thirteen months of working together um as a team um. 
we we did we became friends and we would vet to each other we would you know talk about stuff that was going on with you know and i dude i i thought she was really cool like just yeah a very cool person very smart like she always like look at her on screen she always finds a way to reinvent herself like you know she's wearing that little mask thing now so she doesn't get hit in the face i don't know if that was her idea or not i gotta ask her um but like you know she changed her hair color for a little bit uh she you know now she's doing the most beautiful woman in all of wwe she did stuff with the wine she did stuff with our uh, truth stuff with reggie it never was as cool as the stuff she did with me or it lasted as long but <laughs> yeah she didn't do stuff with them with, which obviously they're both very entertaining i hope reggie gets to do more because i'm very entertained by reggie yeah. and, I, and i feel like he's been stuck in the same kind of 24 7 thing and now he's with dana mm -hmm. brooke and it's really and i love dana brooke too but it's really not i'm not feeling it just my yeah. opinion. but i feel like he's very entertaining hopefully he gets to do more but yeah back to her she cool girl man anytime uh messenger she'll she'll message me back and um hopefully i haven't seen her in a while um hopefully i'll i'll see her soon you know? yeah can we talk about the night that you were suspended from the shark cage and <laughs> how that came about and how did it feel to be just was it like strange for you no i, I don't i'm not scared of heights or anything so we yeah. did the angle and smackdown where uh well at money in the bank where i came back cost oscar the match against carmella and so and then I had the two matches with Oscar and SmackDown, which those were very entertaining. Mm -hmm. um, if you go back and watch those matches. Um, and then they're like, well, our Ellsworth's not going to interfere in this match. We're going to put him in the shark cage. And um, yeah, the shark cage, it was fun, like being on top of the arena and uh, seeing everybody. But then they were like, oh, we're going to do this thing where you're hanging upside down from. And I'm like, how in the <laughs> hell am I going to do that? Like, and we rehearsed it. That was so scary at first. And then I remember Triple H, he came up to me. He's like, look, man, he's like, are, are you are you comfortable doing this? And I remember saying to him, I was like, I will do whatever you guys want me to do because I know I'm, I'm not going to get hurt here. You're not going to let me get hurt. So mm -hmm. he was all right because if, if you can't do this, we'll figure out something else for you know for you to do. I said, no, I got it. I'll do it. No problem. And I, I didn't rehearse it anymore. I said, just let me do it on the pay-per-view. And if you watch, it was hilarious. Like I'm dangling upside down. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, it was cool, man. I had a good time doing it. Um, we we um, the finish was cool where I was dangling upside down, so that's the reason they had to lower the cage and then Carmella pushed Oscar into it, yeah, and got the victory. Man, see, Carmella back then was on fire, man. She was women's champion, beating Charlotte, beating Oscar. Like, I mean, now she's you know her and Zelina are together, and that's that's cool and all, but it, it, it's not like back then where she's the champ mm -hmm. and she's doing all these cool things. I hope she gets back to that because I. I I'm always like root for her and I'm always going to be, you know, a big fan of hers. And I just hope she gets back to the point with or without me um, to be the women's champion. Cause I don't know. I'm just always going to, you know, be on that, you know, be on her side basically. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a very good reason why, as we alluded to that, she's still hired and I'm sure maybe even the best is yet to come for her. Yeah. I hope so, yeah. man. She's um like, she always keeps herself in shape. She's always entertaining. Her promos are good. Um, I don't think people ever complain about her. You never hear really, you no. know, I don't really pay attention to the internet because that's a small minority. Yeah. Like when I, and I'll, show, I'll say an example of that small minority, like complain about Brock Lesnar or Ronda Rousey winning the Royal Rumbles. But They're the then, two biggest stars. Yeah. That. And then mm -hmm. if you watch TV and they come out, people are standing and going nuts yeah. <laughs> when they're coming out. Like, cause you know, most people, most people. 90% of people aren't on the internet crying. It's a mm -hmm. very small minority of people that do that. And they yeah. think they, you know, WWE doesn't sell for as much as other companies. And they won't. And I love that they won't, you know, yeah. and the other, some other companies do. And I'm just like, what are you doing? Like, why are you doing Why are you empowering the, the small minority? And, and, and it's uh, hopefully it, it stops at yeah. some point. Cause you can't do that. And, you know, we'll see. But WWE, I, f I feel like they did that for like a half a second and then they stopped and, mm -hmm. you know, they realized like, no, like Brock Lesnar's our biggest star. Ronda Rousey's our biggest star in the women's division. They're both the main events of WrestleMania. It's going to get more eyes on the product than anybody we have. So mm -hmm. it is what it is. Yep, yeah, exactly. Uh, did you have much interactions when you were there with The Undertaker? What's he like even as like a, a backstage figure? I'll tell you a very cool Undertaker story. Um, the Royal Rumble I was in 2017, he was in it. 
Yeah. I was hoping to do a spot with them in it. They were like, uh, cause I remember they were like, Oh yeah, you're either going to do a spot with Brock Undertaker or Braun. I was like, well, I love Braun, but I've already done enough with him. I hope it's Brock mm-hmm. or Undertaker and mine ended up being Braun again and almost died, but it's all good. I love Braun, <laughs> but it's just like, I never worked with Brock or the Undertaker other than uh, on SmackDown. When I was on team Smack- SmackDown, I was the mascot. The Undertaker yeah. came out and like cut a promo on us all. We're in the ring. So I got to be in the ring and see his entrance. And I remember Randy Orton after that segment was over, because Randy Orton was so cool and always so nice to me. I remember he came up to me. He's like, man, that was pretty cool stuff for you, huh? I was like, yeah, dude. <laughs> like, that's the Undertaker. But um, no, so really cool Undertaker story. After the Royal Rumble 2017, after it was all over, yeah, we're, we're all in the locker room, changing back into our normal clothes. And he came in the locker room, the Undertaker, and shook everyone's hand that was in the Royal Rumble and said, thank you. And that was like the coolest thing to me. I was like, wow, that's respect. That's old school. And that's the way it should be. And I remember thinking that. I was like, that, like, people need to learn from that. Like, you don't have a lot of that these days. Randy Warren just talked about it on some podcast this week. There's not a lot of respect between the boys anymore, which is a shame, man, because I love the boys. I love being around them. I love talking smack to them. I love, you know, ribbing them and getting ribbed. Like, I, it, Mm. It's to me just my humble opinion. It's not as cool or fun anymore, but it is what it is. But yeah, that like, and there's not enough of that guys going around. He thanked everybody that was in it, like me. Like he didn't have to shake my hand, like he did, and and all other twenty eight guys that were on it with him. So it that's that's amazing, why man. that's why he had the career he had, and he stuck around there, and you know, very professional. One of the best ever, like a hundred percent. Oh yeah. yeah. On a on a lighter note, uh, you mentioned ribs there earlier. What's the funniest one that you've ever seen backstage? Man, there's so many. <laughs> I, I, like some I can't talk what, about. What, yeah, what you can tell. <laughs> I'll Sometimes tell you about my trainer, Axel Rod, an ECW original. One yeah. time, him and I were on a road trip to a wrestling show, and we pulled up to a McDonald's in a drive-through, and out of the blue, he just starts yelling at me. Right, I'm driving. He's in the passenger seat. He starts yelling at me, so the uh, people taking our order can hear it on the machine. Yeah, and he's, and he's like, "After you and Adam. I'm like, "I was like, what is your comment?" He goes, "Just go with it. Just go with it." So I was like, "Well, no, f you, blah blah blah." And he's like, "Oh, you, he starts saying like, oh, you cheap mother effer, you're bringing me here and this and that.'" I'm like, "F you, you're not worth bringing to a nice restaurant." Like, I don't know, I just went with it. Yeah, yeah. So he goes, he whispers to me, he's like, "Now get out of the car and let's let's pretend to fight." I'm like. So this is in the drive through on McDonald's. We yeah. get out the car. We're like wrestling, you know, in the drive yeah. through And they called the cops and everything. Oh, and we wow. just left. And I'm like, we never got our food. I'm like, <laughs> what, what was that? He, he said, that's a story we'll tell for the rest of our lives. I was like, what? <laughs> Well, uh, man, that was that was hilarious, dude. That so, did you did you guys just drive to the next McDonald's then and get some food or what? I, I don't. Know. I, I was laughing so hard. I, like, I, I I think we we didn't eat. We we got to like some restaurant in the town we were wrestling at. Sat down to eat, and I, I was just like, yeah. he was. I loved him, man. He the guy, um, Axel Rotten. He was my uh, the main guy that trained me, and he yeah. was one, one of my best friends. Fortunately, we, you know, we lost him. The year I got signed, like a couple of months before I, I ever had the storm in that, he died February of 2016, and I started WWE July of 2016. So was, he missed it by that much, which, man, it, it makes me so sad. But, yeah, he, he was hilarious. He was fun to be around. It's unfortunate he had his demons and it took his life. But um, I, I'll never forget. If you go on my Instagram, James Ellsworth Wrestling, uh, you'll see a bunch of pictures of him and I just goofing off. Like, it, uh, he, he was my buddy, man. And I, but yeah, that was a funny rib. But we, we, I don't know who was getting ribbed, me or or the McDonald's crew. But it was hilarious to me. You you got a good story out of it. Yeah. Uh, to to wrap up anyway, James. Um, I just want to know what you've got coming up, uh, convention wise, show wise, where you're wrestling now. So, yeah, this weekend's a big weekend for me. I'm February 4th. I'm in Hagerstown, Maryland for Adrenaline Championship Wrestling. It's actually the promotion I run, AdrenalineWrestling.com is the website. And then Saturday, I'm in Hollywood, Maryland for, it's called the Celeb Fest. Just a bunch of uh, wrestlers are a part of that. And then Sunday in Baltimore here, where I live, Celeb Fest 3. Um, I mean, MJF signing autographs at it, uh, Lita, Lana. Um, Adam Cole, uh, just to name a few, the boogeyman's going to be there. Um, 
like, I mean, it's over like 50 names. I, I bully yeah. Ray, um, I just so carrying cross Scarlet. Um, I mean, just to name a few, it's going to be a bunch of people. Dorado, Rich Swan. I'm just thinking people that I can remember that are going to be there. Yeah. But yeah, it's going to be like 50 names it's in Baltimore. So I got three things this weekend, which is, that's a good weekend. I mean, that's what you want. Um, you know, I, I'll be at the WrestleCon in Dallas for WrestleMania week. I'm just going to be signing all weekend. I, I remember in 2018, I believe it was, I did WrestleCon and wrestled a bunch of times while I was out. Man, you, it, I'd rather just beat the fans at WrestleCon all the time. And, like, it's you get more out of that. And yeah, and then you're not running around like crazy either. Like, I'm getting old, man. Like, I need to chill out a little. Like, I'm a very – like you're, I'm you're, not you're, as wild as I used to be. Like I got my daughters, I got my fiance. I'm getting married this year. Like I'm really chill now. You yeah. know, I just want to chill, sign autographs, say hi to my fans, and <laughs> roll but, out. But, but you're not old in wrestling terms. Well, I'll be 38 this year. I'm getting mm-hmm. up there, you know, yeah. I've been wrestling 20 years now, so I've been. I uh, you could go till maybe what 60. I don't. I that's not for me. No, yeah. I. You know, so my plan is to be a manager and like five, I think I'm going to wrestle for like four or five more years. till I'm like 42. Cause that'll give me 25 years in the business mm-hmm. um, wrestling. So I'm like, okay, I wrestle for 25 years, but like I was basically a manager with Carmella and I really enjoyed doing it. And that's a whole other art form in itself. And you know, where you get to talk and you know, and then if like, I need to wrestle a match with whoever I'm managing or whatever. Like I can do it, you know? And yeah. I think that's my calling in wrestling. I want to be the next Jim Cornette or Bobby the brain, Heeman or Jimmy Hart or like, you know, Mr. Fuji or something like that. That's, you know, I think I'm going to try. That's my goal next is, is, is to transition into that. Yeah. yeah. Well, the very best to look with everything, James, I'll put all your links for your social medias down at the bottom of this video. Even cool. though you don't like social media, I'll put them there. Anyway. Oh, it's, I don't hate it. I just don't like it either. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Thanks a million, man. All right. Thank you. And nice talking Thanks. to you, brother. You too, man.